Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about another integration technique, and this is called the integration by parts. And remember last time, I did the U substitution, and that was for to undo the chain rule for the derivative. This time, the integration by parts, it's actually how we are going to undo the product rule for the derivative. So let me show you guys how we can derive the formula, and then I will show you guys two examples right here. And you can watch my other videos, I will show you guys how to do the DI method, the DI setup for the integration by parts. Anyway, we are going to start off by saying let u and v be functions of x. And because we are talking about how we are going to undo the product rule for the derivative, let me just multiply u and v right here. And I'm going to differentiate them. So I will just write down d for differentiating the product of u and v. And this is just going to be the product rule, right? And I'll write this down as I'll keep the first function, u, and then I'll multiply by the derivative of the second. And I will use v for differential. So I will just put down the v like this. And next, we have to add the second function, which is v. And then you multiply by the derivative of the first function. And I will write down du for the, the differential. So this is pretty much it. And now, huh, how are we going to undo the product rule for the derivative? Well we can just integrate them, right? So I'm going to integrate both sides. I'll integrate this right here. And also, I will integrate this and that, like that. And the beauty of this is that the integral and the differential, they cancel each other out like that. So in another word, on the left-hand side, we just get u times v. And this is equal to the integral of u dv plus the integral of v du. And you have to keep in mind that both u and v are functions of x. So if you look at the dv, in fact, this is going to be something times dx, right? First stuff. Hmm. Well, this is what we're going to do next. You see, this right here has no integral, but these two they do, right? We are going to bring one of them to the other side, and traditionally, we move this to the other side. Let me just minus the integral of v du on both sides. So that you will see this and that cancel. And we are going to end up with the integral of u dv. Let me put this down first. And this is equal to u v minus the integral of v du. And this right here is, in fact, the traditional formula for the integration by parts. And the idea is that if you look at an integral like this right here, try to pick your u and dv, and then try to break them apart, one to be differentiated, the other one to be integrated, and then you can actually construct that right-hand side like this. So what are we trying to do? Of course, let me demonstrate these two examples for you guys. First of all, we have the integral of x times sine x dx. You know this is not so good because if imagine you do have the square right here inside of the sine, if you have sine x squared like this and then times x, you can just do a u sub for that. But unfortunately, we don't have the square. And this right here is actually doable. Let's give integration by parts a try. What you are going to do is, you are going to choose your u and dv from your original integrand. I will just write down this, which is my u and dv. This right here will be my setup right here. And let's see. I pretty much have two functions, namely x times sine x, right? So these are the two functions. And I am going to choose x right here. And then I'll put down sine x. And because this right here is about the differential, so let me attach the dx right here as well. OK. And now I make my selection of my u and dv. So it seems like here is my u, and this is my dv. And that seems to be like that. And if you look at the right-hand side, I have to use my u again, but I want to give a v. Well, u is right here already, but in order to for us to get the v. From the differential, I will have to integrate both sides. 
because remember, integrating the differential, you pretty much just get a phi. And we just have to work this out, the integral of sine x. And this is not as bad as the original. The integral of sine x is what? Negative cosine x right here. Very good. And we don't need to put on a plus c because this is not the integral that we really care. We only put on a plus c at the very end, OK? So this is how we can get the phi, right? But if you look at, I also need to have the du on the right-hand side. So to get a du, I look at the u right here. I will differentiate both sides. So it's similar to the u substitution. And the derivative of x is 1. And we put down dx right here, 1 times dx for the differential. That's pretty much it. These are pretty much my ingredients. And now we will put them together for the answer. This is going to be equal to, you see, we have the u times phi. And this is what you can do. Just multiply this and that together. Look at the x though, x and this. So I'll put down x times negative cosine x. If you set up your uh, work right here, it's always going to be the product of this diagonal. And you get x, which is your u. And this right here is your phi. And that's exactly u times phi right here. And then the formula says I will have to minus another integral. Yes. To do an integral, you have to do another integral right here for that original integral for integration by parts. It's OK, though. You see, this is going to be the integral. I will have to put down my phi, which is this, namely negative cosine x. And then I will have to write down my du, which is my dx right sure. here. So you see that this is just phi times du. And this is just from the formula, and of course, you see that u phi minus the integral of phi du. So we are just following the formula. And now, this integral is actually not that bad at all. We can totally integrate this rather than the original, right? So we are making a tremendous amount of progress. Anyway, let me just clean things up a little bit. Let me write this down as negative x cosine x, and then we see that let me just do negative times negative first. Of course, that's positive. And let me write down the integral of cosine x again, dx. And now, what's the answer of the integral of cosine x? The answer to that is positive sine x, right? So I will just write this down again, negative x cosine x. And we add it with positive sine x right here. And we are all done. So in the end, we put a plus c. and that it's it. And if you guys differentiate this right here, you actually get x sine x for the answer. OK, now let's look at another example. Here we have the integral of x to the fourth power times ln x dx. And suppose we do what we did over there. Let me just put down u and dv right here. And I'm going to choose this to be my u. And then I'll put down this to be my dv, namely ln x dx. And let's see what happens. Well, from here, I will have to differentiate both sides so I can get the u. And we get 4x to the third power dx. And that's not bad to do. But how can we go from dv to v? We will have to integrate both sides. And now the question is, what is the integral of ln x? The answer to this is not 1 over x, because that's the derivative of ln x. We are trying to integrate ln x. And the answer for that is, we will have to use integration by parts for this. So in fact, this is not a good choice for the dv. And I would suggest you guys, whenever you are doing the integration by parts, you should always try to pick your dv first, because you have to make sure this right here is easy enough to be integrated. Okay, So we are just going to kind of switch the choices and see what happens. And with that being said, it's not with this being the u and that being the dv. You have to really think about it carefully. And let me just put this down. Well, for the dv, I'm actually going to put x to the fourth power along with dx. And I know I can totally integrate this, right? So x to the fourth power times dx, that's my dv. And I will, of course, 
put this to be the U. And you see, from here, to get the V, I will just have to integrate both sides. And this is not bad to do, because the integral of x to the fourth power is just, you add 1 to the power, which is 5, which is 1 over 5 right here. And then you have x to the fifth power, right? And now, I can look at this and differentiate both sides. That's pretty easy to do. You can always differentiate, right? And you get the u equal the derivative of ln x is 1 of x dx. And with that, we have the ingredients to finish this. Here we go. This integral is equal to, if you study it like this, you can just multiply the diagonal, this times that. So I'll write down ln x. I want to put down parentheses because I want to indicate x is the only thing inside of the ln. And I multiply by that, 1 over 5, x to the fifth power. And when you do that, you have the u times v already. And you have to remember, you have to minus the integral of the product of this and that. And let's see, I'm going to put this down first for the v, which is 1 over 5, x to the fifth power. And I'm going to write this for the du. So I'll multiply by 1 over x dx. And hopefully, this is also pretty easy for us to be integrated, right? And now, let me just clean this up a little bit. I will write down 1 over 5 x to the fifth power times ln x first. Usually, the polynomial goes first, so I'll put it down like that. And we see I can write down the minus. Let me bring down 1 over 5. And the best part of this is that the x to the fifth power and the x, I can cancel them out. Right? And then we have x to the fourth left. So this is pretty easy to integrate as well. So we know we are on the right track. So let's integrate x to the fourth power dx. Well, to integrate this, I will just need to add 1, which is 5, and divide it by this power, which is 1 over 5 right here. So we see this is just 1 over 5 x to the fifth power times ln x, and then this times that is minus 1 over 25, and then you have x to the fifth power. And we're all done. In the end, put plus c. And this right here is it. And that's it for the video. And as you guys know, we need to do a lot, a lot of practice in order to be good at doing integrals. So be sure you guys go check out my other videos for other integration techniques and also check out the description because I will have the link to the files of the problems that I create for you guys to practice. And if you are new to my channel, please subscribe and also help me to share this video to your friends, classmates, teachers, kids, parents, your dogs, your cats, whatever, anyone, right? Anyway, this is it.